We've got some Jerry Judy trade rumors to get to in just a quick moment. But first, this across the wire right, right after we filmed the Jerry Judy trade talk. And that is P.J. Locke re-signing with the Broncos. 2019 pick out of Texas. He's always been a special teamer. Third, fourth safety, closer to fourth off the depth chart. But I got no real qualms with this. Um, it's going to be a training camp battle. I don't think you should pencil P.J. Locke in as an absolute lock, no pun intended, to make this roster. Last year, filling in when Caden Stearns and uh, Justin Simmons got hurt, 22 tackles, one pass breakup. Here's how the safety room currently looks at this present moment. Justin Simmons, Caden Stearns, DeLaren Turner-Yell, and P.J. Locke all re-signed. K-Jack is a free agent. I don't think they'll re-sign him, but I didn't think they'd re-sign him last year, so maybe if they miss out on a certain guy named C.J. Gardner-Johnson, they decide to run it back, but truth be told, I'd rather have Caden Stearns start anyway. But that's the news right there. P.J. Locke re-signing. Don't have the contract details, but I'm going to guess one year, bet minimum. It's going to be a training camp battle. He's at not a lock to make this roster or anything like that. But another Broncos free agent signing. So I'm going to throw it back to old me. We're going to travel back in time and talk about the Jerry Judy trade buzz right now. Welcome in to the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with more trade rumors surrounding Jerry Judy. Plus, I want to talk about C.J. Gardner-Johnson at the end of the show. But the Jerry Judy trade rumors refuse to quit. And when there's smoke, there's often fire. And I'm starting to really believe that Jerry Judy might end up getting traded. So we've heard from various reporters across the league that Denver has been fielding calls. And my thought was always, are they taking calls or are they listening to calls, right? Not to go full and call and coward on you, but are they picking up the phone or are they actually serious about these offers they could be getting? Benjamin Albright, who I think is one of the best Broncos reporters out there, tweeted out, source confirms multiple teams have called inquiring about wide receiver Jerry Judy. Price tag remains high Team asking for a first or second plus a player. High second or a player. Patriots, Browns, Cowboys, who was interested at trade deadline last year, among others inquiring. So, let's discuss here. Jerry Judy potentially getting traded. I've got some raw thoughts. First thing I think we should start with, his stats, right? Is this a player that Denver could somewhat live without, keep moving without? I mean, if you just go off the numbers, I don't think that's someone who's absolutely unreplaceable, irreplaceable. 972 yards, six touchdowns. He ended the year on a really high note. But is Judy on track to be a wide receiver one in the NFL? We all know what it is, right? You know it when you see it. Is that the direction Judy is heading? Maybe. I, I can't say definitively one way or the other. But I think that because I am stuck in the middle, I have to be really sold on a great offer to move on from someone who does seem like they could be trending in the direction of being a legit wide receiver one in this league. So with that said, I want to know from everyone watching, would you trade Judy for a first and more, right? Would you be open for it being a first or a second and a player? Let me know in the comment section, why for yes and for no if you would be open to trading Jerry Judy? For me, if the Broncos get a great offer, and we'll look at six teams in just a second who could be interested in making an offer for him, I can see the logic behind why Denver would feel like trading Judy might be the best thing for this roster. Sean Payton comes into town. Okay, let's think about Sean Payton, New Orleans Saints. What does he do there? run the football. That's a cliche. Everyone likes to run the football. But the free agent moves definitely back that up. Mike McGlinchey, what is he? One of the better run blocking tackles. Ben Powers, one of the best run blocking tackles, okay? They sign a fullback. They sign a blocking tight end. They sign a running back. Finally, with all that, all signs are pointing to they want to run the football. So if passing becomes the second element to this team, well, maybe you don't need three receivers. Maybe you can get by with Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, who they are very excited to get back this season. 
and maybe getting a first for Judy and plugging that first-round pick player somewhere else on this roster could make this team better than having Judy on a run-first team with a crowded wide receiver. That's sort of my best stab at following why the Broncos would be interested in trading away an ascending player, in my opinion, here. So we had this yesterday from Sportsna, who tweeted out, the Broncos are listening to offers for Jerry Judy. Our Benjamin Albright provides some inside information on Browns and Cowboys interest as we look at six ideal landing spots. Here were those six ideal landing spots. The Browns and their first pick in the draft, which is 42 overall, if they want a first, it's not Cleveland, right? It's probably not Cleveland or Chicago because they're not giving up the number nine pick in the draft. So would either of those sides be interested in giving up their second round pick and a player? More importantly, would Denver be interested in getting a second round pick and a player? I think if they really want to retool, they should really only be looking for first. And if that's the case, Insert Baltimore, Giants, Dallas, and Green Bay. Those teams, I think, make some more sense for Denver if they just are looking for a first. But if they can't, maybe they do slide to high second and a player for the Cleveland Browns or the Chicago Bears. The wide receiver room, by the way, in Denver right now, Judy, Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton. If you move on from Judy, you slide Patrick and Sutton over. Montreal Washington probably isn't next. Maybe Brandon Johnson. I mean, they're also going to draft a receiver if they move on from Judy. So that guy, along with K.J. Hamler, could be the wide receiver three on the roster. Um, they would definitely look to add some sort of fill-out player in free agency if they moved on from Judy. But it'll be interesting to see if Denver ultimately decides we are better without Judy in exchange for a first or a second and a player. Now, this is the number one channel for all Broncos news and rumors. So anytime trade rumors come out, we break it down here on the channel, which is why you got to subscribe. Make sure to hit that sub button. We're trying to grow this channel, trying to get to 13,000 subs. Help us accomplish that goal by subscribing today. The next segment on today's show is going to be about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I've heard some buzz out there that Denver is reportedly showing some interest in signing the former New Orleans Saint who was drafted by Sean Payton and maybe he wants to be reunited with his young up-and-coming ascending safety. So Aaron Wilson reported that the Broncos are among teams with interest in Eagles free agent C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Now I should mention we are talking about NFL free agency, the most fluid thing in the world. Yesterday, we talked about Darius Slay coming to Denver, potentially. Now he's going back to Philly. So if things change, bear with us. But as it stands right now, he's a free agent. He's not returning to the Eagles at this present moment. So could Denver swoop in and add him to their safety room? K-Jack is a free agent. I like the idea of slotting Caden Stearns in there and having that be your starting safety tandem with Justin Simmons. I think that is a great safety duo, frankly. I just don't think you have to go out and sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson for, what's he going to get, guys? $13 million a season? Jesse Bates just got 16. Juan Thornhill got seven. I think he's in the middle. I just think that it's not an overpay. I think you have a good up-and-coming player who is way cheaper. Is C.J. Gardner-Johnson better than Caden Stearns? Absolutely. But is he so much better that you got to pay him 12x more, 12x more. That I'm not so sure about. But last four seasons, he's been one of the best in the league. There's no denying that. He had six interceptions last year in just 12 games. I mean, if you play 17 games, that number could be closer to eight or nine, okay? Before that, with New Orleans, you could tell he was really starting to get his footing and start to become one of the league's better free safeties out there. But Caden Stearns, through 20 games, when you look at his stats, not like this guy's a scrub. Four interceptions in 20 games? That's pretty good for a guy who hasn't been a starting safety, right? Who gets limited time? Who comes in during injuries? That's why I like the idea of seeing, of seeing what Caden Stearns could do as a real full-time starter and not have to pay $12 million when is Denver in a championship window this year? Hand up? I don't think so. Sorry. 
unless Sean Payton can get Russell Wilson back to 2019 version, which seems difficult to believe right now, they're going to have a lot of good guys with no real consistent quarterback play, and all of a sudden they'll have a ton of free agents and a lot of uh, tabs up piling up, but they'll still go back to, we need a quarterback. And by the time they get a quarterback, these guys are going to have their contracts expiring. So I'm not saying they don't sh they shouldn't spend any money at all. I'm saying don't buy in on this free agency period when I don't think this is the year to be spending bukus of money at every single spot and getting every single player just because, right? It's not baseball. If it was, different conversation. So pick an option for me. Sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson, type one. Start Caden Stearns and save cap space. Type two. I'm putting two down in the comment section. More so because of Stearns than saving money, if I'm being honest, right? It'd be one thing if Caden Stearns wasn't a good safety. And it's like, hey, I just want to see what he can do. We'll find out if he's the guy. I've liked what I've seen out of Caden Stearns through two seasons. I want to see more of it. And I love that I'm seeing it for a million dollars a season. That's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. So the next segment on the show, before we let you guys go, is the Mike McGlinchey contract an overpay? He signed with Denver five-year, $87.5 million contract. And I was excited then, and I still am, okay? The takeaway is that I think the takeaway should not be that this is an absolute overpay. But the other contracts given out, they're interesting. Before we look at those numbers, I've got to tell you guys about the sponsor for today's show. It's this great Fanatics product. It's a zip-up jacket hoodie. 25% off when you use the link down below, chatsports.com slash broncozip. Get it, to get, get it today. Stay warm. Stay in style. We're in your favorite club. So let's look at the free agent contracts given out thus far at the offensive tackle position. Mike McGlinchey's number one. Five-year, $87.5 million. Kudos to Mike McGlinchey's agent because he won free agency. I don't... Okay, I've got no issue with the contract because he's a really good player and they needed a really good right tackle. Is it an overpay? Maybe a little bit. I didn't think he would get more than Juwan Taylor or Orlando Brown. I mean, just yearly average salary, it's $17.5 million for McGlinchey. For Juwan Taylor... 20 million, so an increase there, but less overall money. Orlando Brown, four years, 64 million. That shocked me. Kayla McGarry, that was an absolute bargain. Just 11 million dollars? Like, if I asked you before they signed McGlinchey, would you rather have McGlinchey for 17 and a half a season or McGarry for 11 million and change a season? Curious what your answer would have been back then. That's all I'm saying. I still like the signing because Denver just couldn't mess around. They had to get it right. And even if that means it's a bit of a rich contract, I still like it. The PFF grades for him last season, 35th overall amongst all quali uh, qualifying tackles. Overall grade, 71 and a half. You can see he's a better run blocker than pass blocker, which is why I think Denver might be trending in a direction of we want to run the football, so... Circling back to the Jerry, Tru Jerry Judy trade segment, they want to run the football. Maybe they don't need three Pro Bowl level receivers when they're all at their best. You know what I'm saying? Ten penalties, six sacks a year ago. We can look at his overall PFF grades year by year. He's been one thing pretty much. Consistent, right? He might not be the number one tackle in football, but he is a big step up from Calvin Anderson, from Billy Turner from Cam Fleming, and on and on and on. So for that reason, I am excited about this signing because he is exactly what the Denver Broncos need. Some stability, hopefully, for the first time in a long time at the right side of the offensive line. So here's the question. Did Denver overpay for Mike McGlinchey? It's kind of sad that I've gone all the way here after just like four days after the signing. But just looking at the other contracts, I didn't think he would get the most. I thought Orlando Brown would be the highest. So let me know why for yes or end for no in the comment section below.